Let's assume there is a scientific expedition launching into outer space using a rocket or spacecraft. The journey will not be too far. We won't be going to the edge of the universe, for example, or even to the nearest galaxy. The trip will be to the outer edge of our solar system, specifically beyond Pluto. However, it's important to note that the universe is vast and expansive. Our solar system is a very small part of it. Just imagine that scientists say if we entered the universe randomly, the chance of landing on a planet or even being close to one is one in a billion trillion trillion. That's one five followed by 33 zeros. Space is filled with an enormous amount of empty space. Although our expedition will be at the outer edge of our solar system, as we mentioned before, the mission will take a long time. If we were to measure it, for example, at the speed of light, it would take approximately 7 hours. However, since nothing can move at the speed of light, we won't have anything faster than the New Horizon spacecraft, which travels at around 80,000 kilometers per hour. That's the vehicle we will use for our entire journey. Fasten your seatbelts because we're about to take off. Hello, I'm David and in this episode, we will talk about the Kuiper Belt. But before we begin, go bring some some snacks and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss our videos. Now, let's join the astronauts aboard the New Horizon spacecraft during their journey starting from the moment they leave Earth. They will notice how silent the space is. They will begin to grasp the true meaning of the word space. The word space is indeed accurate. Space is an extremely quiet and empty place to the extent that our solar system is considered the most lively thing within trillions upon trillions of kilometers. Additionally, as the astronauts start to comprehend the meaning of space, they will notice something peculiar. There isn't a single map among the maps that accurately describes the shape of the solar system. All the maps, diagrams, school textbooks, and online videos we have seen often depict the planets very close to each other, to the point where Jupiter's shadow falls on Saturn frequently. The reason for this closeness is not that we are drawing them on a small scale. The truth is that this is the only way we can visually represent the overall scene of the Sun and the planets of the solar system. However, the reality is that this depiction is entirely inaccurate. There is not a single diagram we see that adheres to an accurate scale drawing. If we tried to replicate the shape of the solar system on paper according to a true scale, it would be completely different. For instance, if we were to draw the Earth on paper and make its size comparable to that of a P, in a true scale drawing, Jupiter would be about 300 meters away from that P. And to visualize a distance of 300 meters, imagine a 100-story building. So, to draw Jupiter and Earth on a single sheet of paper, you would need a paper that is 100 stories tall. Before you react and express your astonishment, let me tell you something even more mind-boggling. If we consider drawing Pluto along with them on the same paper, we would need a sheet of paper that is 2.5 kilometers long. And not only that, the size of Pluto on the paper would be equivalent to that of a tiny bacterium. The reason we draw them in this manner is simply to fit them onto a single sheet of paper. Even if we wanted this single sheet to represent the entire solar system, it wouldn't be feasible. The Earth itself would be too large to be visible under a microscope. Our solar system is truly vast, and this is something that the astronauts will come to realize during their journey. Now, let's forget about what I mentioned earlier and focus on drawing. Draw the sun as a round sphere, colored yellow, with the planets orbiting around it. Because, in reality, this is the only way we can gather all the planets on a single sheet of paper. Now let us remind you that our journey is still heading towards the edge of the solar system, and let's assume that the journey is nearing Pluto. This is certainly not an easy task. To give you an idea of the difficulty, let me tell you an interesting fact. In 1977, the Voyager 1 spacecraft was launched from Earth and set its course for Pluto. The sentence we mentioned earlier took about 30 years to happen. The Voyager 1 spacecraft, which departed Earth in 1977, reached Pluto around 2010. But of course, we don't have time for that. This episode is 10 minutes long, so we have already arrived at Pluto. However, Pluto is not the true target of the mission. Our goal is what lies beyond Pluto, specifically the Kuiper Belt, which is a vast celestial kingdom of asteroids and icy bodies. Beyond Pluto lies a vast and awe-inspiring world that extends for about 50 astronomical units. To clarify, an astronomical unit is the distance between Earth and the Sun, which is approximately 150 million kilometers. Within this vast world, there is a significant amount of rocky debris, ice, and ammonia. When the planet Pluto was discovered for the first time, scientists put forth the hypothesis that Pluto is not alone but rather a member of another celestial world. If we wonder how this world could exist, this world, known as the Kuiper Belt, is actually the remnants of the formation of the solar system itself. In other words, we can say that it is the leftover materials from the constituents of the solar system. These remnants are spread out over distances that can exceed millions of kilometers, making gravity incapable of shaping them into a complete planet. The Kuiper Belt bears a resemblance in its composition to the asteroid belt found between Mars and Jupiter, 
which we discussed in a previous episode. However, the Kuiper Belt is immensely larger, about 20 times wider, and significantly more massive, approximately 200 times the mass of the asteroid belt. This region has seen the discovery of over 100,000 objects, mostly with diameters of around 100 kilometers. These objects are primarily composed of rocks, hydrocarbons such as ammonia and methane, and water ice. In general, the Kuiper Belt is the primary source of all comets that traverse the solar system. Countless rocks and giant comets are propelled from this region, with the famous Halley's Comet, which appears once every 76 years in Earth's sky, originating from the Kuiper Belt. What's even more fascinating is that the meteorite that struck the Earth with such force over 65 million years ago, leading to the extinction of the dinosaurs, also came from the Kuiper Belt. Although its journey took approximately 5 million years to reach Earth, it eventually made its way to the planet's surface and brought an end to the age of the dinosaurs. Finally, the journey has reached the Kuiper Belt, and the spacecraft's explorers have noticed how dark and tranquil the surroundings are. The reason for this darkness is that they are now incredibly far away from the sun. From their perspective, the sun, which they were accustomed to seeing as a bright shining star, has become incredibly small, appearing as nothing more than a tiny pinprick of light. What's astonishing is that despite its minuscule size, the sun possesses enough tremendous gravity to keep all these comets in orbit around it. Even though we are approximately 8.25 billion kilometers away from it in this location, after safely arriving in the Kuiper Belt, one may wonder why scientists took such a long time to discover this immense realm of the Kuiper Belt. Let me clarify that they didn't physically reach it, rather, they discovered it through astronomical telescopes. Through observation, astronomers have achieved remarkable feats in history. For example, if someone were standing on the moon and lit a match, the equipment used by today's astronomers would allow them to pinpoint the exact location. So why is the world beyond Pluto completely hidden, with no one having any knowledge about it? The answer lies in the areas that scientists observe in the sky. Most people believe that astronomers go out at night with their telescopes and gaze randomly at the sky. In in reality, most telescopes are designed to focus on and examine tiny portions of the sky. Each telescope has a specific purpose, such as observing neutron stars, studying black holes, or observing galaxies billions of light years away. These specific tasks make it nearly impossible for us to observe the Kuiper Belt in its early stages. Additionally, the rocks in the Kuiper Belt are extremely dark, absorbing only tiny fractions of sunlight and hardly reflecting any light. Moreover, they are small in size and do not reflect light significantly. Furthermore, they are spread out over vast distances, making their detection extremely challenging. It wasn't until 1930 that scientists hypothesized the existence of a belt of objects beyond the planet Neptune, and they considered Pluto as a member of this vast family. This family is now known as the Kuiper Belt. However, back then, nobody attempted to observe it directly they simply speculated its presence. The prevailing belief in the existence of the Kuiper Belt arises from the formation of the solar system. The Sun managed to capture the majority of the mass, approximately 99.98% of the entire solar system. The rest of the matter, the lighter material, began to clump together to form planets, leaving behind a vast number of rocks that had been expelled from the solar system's edge due to the gravitational force of the giant gas planets. These rocks eventually formed what is now known as the Kuiper Belt. Now, let's talk about Pluto, which is considered one of the most important members of the Kuiper Belt when Pluto was discovered for the first time, scientists were very confused, even the most skilled of them, because scientists were observing orbital anomalies in the planets Neptune and Uranus, which made them suspect that there is an undiscovered ninth planet, and it is most likely a gaseous giant as well. It was named Planet X at the time, and they believed it was larger than Jupiter itself by about 10 times, and very far to the point that it does not get enough light from the Sun to reflect back to us a second time. They believed that Planet X was actually a star, not a planet, but a failed star that turned into a brown dwarf. What justified their thinking was that most of the stars in the sky, when we look at them through a telescope, we find that they are binary systems, meaning that most of the stars that exist are two stars together, and sometimes they are clinging to each other and exchanging gravity, which makes us wonder why our sun is alone and isolated. Why don't we have two suns like most other solar systems, which made them believe that planet X was potentially the second sun, but our sun exhausted most of the matter and X failed to fully form into a complete star and ended up resembling the planets. They said that according to its distance from the sun, it completes its orbit around the sun every 20,000 years, but it later turned out to just be a very strange dwarf planet, even in terms of its orbit. Pluto is in many times the closest to us than the planet Neptune, 
and at other times it moves away completely and disappears entirely from the sky as happened in 1999 and then it returned and reappeared. All of these were reasons that made scientists rethink classifying it as a core member among the planets of the solar system and they eventually settled that they classify it as a dwarf planet. As for the discovery of the Kuiper belt, we have just barely taken the first step in discovering what can be discovered from the belt which may contain in its folds in the future many planets like Pluto or even larger than it. So today we talked about the Kuiper belt. Let us know in the comments what we should talk about in the upcoming videos. And if you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And for first time viewers, subscribe and turn on notifications to get our videos as soon as they are released. See you next episode.